All right. Good day, ladies and gentlemen, seventh graders. Um, quick review from last week. Last week we talked about the introduction to rational numbers, integers, fractions, and decimals. Well, um, we talked about opposites and absolute value, and um, we are going to this week just kind of add on to that, and we're going to start talking about addition and subtraction of integers. We're just going to start with integers, but this applies to all rational numbers. It applies to all fractions and all decimals as well, but we're just going to focus on the integers because that's the easiest thing to look at first. All right, so we're going to start with integer uh, addition integer rules. It says I can recognize if a number sentence is positive or negative. Second learning target is I can use counter chips to add integers. And the third learning target is I can use number lines to add integers. So in this video, we are going to cover all three of those things. And then we will do another video over subtraction of integer rules. So let's get started. All right, so before we really take off on any of this, I'm going to talk to you about the number line, okay? So we have a number line, and it's easy to draw a number line if you just draw a straight line and you put a zero in the middle of it. And I know a lot of you guys get hung up on trying to do every little number. You don't have to do that, okay? Uh, the way I do all of my number lines is the first thing I do is I'll look at the scale. If I have a really small scale, if it's just like three, two, one, the numbers are really close together, um, anywhere between positive and negative 10, I will just write ones out. I'll do one, two, three, four, five, and I will mark them like one, two, three, four, and then I'll put a five here, okay? And then I say six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, okay? And I do the same for the opposite side. Now, if these were, let's say this was hundreds, I could or tens, I could say 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and I could put a 50 there, uh, 60, 70, 80, 90, and make that 100. So it depends, or I could do it by fives, or I could do it by whatever I needed my scale to be, depending on the numbers, okay? So I'm going to, Start with the ones this time. So I have negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight, negative nine, negative ten, negative eleven, negative twelve, negative thirteen, negative fourteen, negative fifteen. Okay, so this is my basic number one. I have positive fifteen and negative fifteen. You don't have to go that far. This is just so you guys get an understanding of what it looks like. All right, so what we're going to do is the first thing I'm going to discuss with you guys is how a number line works, okay? And this is something that if you are watching this, you need to go get a piece of paper, pause this video, go get a piece of paper because you really need to take some notes on this, okay? All right, so let's look. We always kind of start from our zero point, or we, we find our zero point. And I can tell you, if you have a positive number, so if a positive number In other words, 4 or 10 or 16 or anything like that, they always go to the right. You move toward the right on the number line. That's always, okay, always, if it's positive, it goes to the right. So if it's a, if you have 2 plus 4, that's a positive 2 and a positive 4. So you'd say 2 plus 1, 2, 3, 4 more, and that would get you, and everybody knows 2 plus 4 is 6. So 2 plus 4 equals 6, and we know that by saying we go from 1, 2, and then plus 4 more, 1, 2, 3, 4, and we land on 6 right there. Okay, so that's six bases, positive two and positive four, we both six bases to the right. Okay, now with that said, negative numbers, like negative four, negative 10, negative 16, any of those, they always move to the right, or to the left on the number line. Move, T O W A R the left on the 
I'm not. Okay, so just like positive 2, 2 plus 4 equals 6, if you say negative 2 minus 4, that's also negative 6 because that's a minus 2, or we say negative 2 plus negative 4 equals negative 6. Either one of those means the same thing, but you always take whatever the sign is in front of it, even if it's a minus sign, that's saying take away 2, take away 4. So if you were to do that, you would say from the 0, take away 2, that's 2 backwards, and then two more, 4 more backwards, 1, 2, 3, 4, you're going to land on negative 6. Okay? And that's how the number line works. So that's what you have to keep in mind when we're doing these, okay? So if I was to ask you the absolute value of negative 6, you would tell me it was 6. The absolute value of positive 6 is 6. And 6 plus negative 6 equals 0. Now, those are called zero pairs. If you have two numbers that are opposites of each other, they always equal 0. Okay, so two numbers that are opposites, and we learned that term last, last week, always, always equal zero. Okay, so in other words, 100 plus negative 100 equals 0. Negative 5 plus 5 equals 0 because they're opposites, okay? Even if I wrote 100 minus 100 equals 0 because that's a positive 100 because there's no sign in front of it. And because this is a minus sign and you have to take away, it's like making that 100 negative because it's saying take away 100. It's also 0. This is like saying one positive 100 plus taking away 100. This is like saying 100 take away 100. You just don't have the plus sign. Okay, this is take away 5 and then add 5 to it. Gives you 0. So all of these are called, these are all um, opposites. That if you add two numbers that are always opposite, or opposites are always equal to zero. Okay. Now, the reason I ask you that, and because you have to know that their absolute values are the same. If you have a number that's absolute value is bigger than the other number, then if you add them together, that's our first learning target is... I can recognize if a number sentence is positive or negative. So we're going to start off by looking at, look at this line. And if we have, let's say we have the number positive 10, positive 10, okay, and negative 2. Which one has the greater absolute value? I hope you said that it was positive 10, because 10 is 10 spaces from 0, and 2 is just, negative 2 is just 2 spaces from 0. So if you add those together, I mean, if you say negative 2 plus 10, it's going to pull to the positive way. So in other words, if you take your calculator, and let's say we have negative 2 plus 10, because that's what our number sentence is, we have negative 2 plus 10, negative 2 plus 10 gives us positive 8. So that means that because the 10, it, which is positive, has the greater absolute value, that the answer is also going to have a greater absolute value. And it doesn't matter which way we put it. We could have wrote 10 plus negative 2. Let's try it that way. 10 plus negative 2 is also still 8. So it does not matter which way you do it. And that rule is the commutative rule of addition. The commutative rule of addition says, 
or community property, sorry. Community property of addition says it doesn't matter which order that you put the numbers in when you add them, that they will always equal the same thing. Just like three plus two is five and, five, and two plus three is five. Well, it works the same way with negative and positive numbers. So remember that, community property of addition. Okay, so back to our, our number line. If we have the numbers, let's say we had negative 11 and negative 4, okay? So negative 11 plus negative 4. Well, both of these are negative. So if we start at negative 11, when we go down 4 more, 2, 3, 4, we're going to equal negative 15. So if you have two negative numbers that you're adding together, then it's always going to be a negative number. Okay, so that's the next thing you need to write down. Two negative numbers added together will always be negative. Just like if you were to take two positive numbers, okay? So if you had two positive numbers like 11 and positive 4, so if you said positive 11 and a positive 4 more, 1, 2, 3, 4, that gives you positive 15. So the opposite rule to this one is that two positive numbers added together will always be positive. And our examples to those are negative 11 plus negative 4 and positive 11 plus positive 4. This one equals negative 15. This one equals just positive 15. Now you will see sometimes the, the um, second negative number put in parentheses like this. That is just to separate that plus sign and that minus or that negative 4, take away 4. It's done just as an etiquette to keep those two separated. Sometimes we will do it, sometimes they don't. You'll see it both ways. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to go to our IXL practice and I'm actually going to do some IXL with you guys today because most of the, our skills our skill practice this week. Um, we're going to use the IXL to work. You guys have five IXLs and you only have one assignment. Uh, and the assignment happens to be uh, to make a poster of the addition and subtraction rules. So it'll take you a little bit more time, but the computation that you're going to have to do this week is going to be on your IXL. So let's look at your IXL and it happens to be integer addition rules. That's your first one. And you can off, obviously go through your Google Classroom to get there, but we're just going this way. Okay. So let's look at this. This says, is negative 8 plus 99 positive or negative? Okay. So this one right here, the negative 8 is, a, a, is going to the left of the number line, has absolute value of 8. And the positive 99 plus 99 has absolute value of 99. So which one's absolute value is bigger? the positive number's absolute value is bigger. So that means that the answer is going to be positive. Okay, let's try this one. Is eight plus negative six positive or negative? Well, eight is positive and it has a greater absolute value than negative six on the number line. It's, it is further away from zero. So eight plus negative six, that's gonna make that positive. Okay, 
Look at these two, negative 88 plus negative 22. Both of these have a negative or negative numbers, so they're both going to the left on the number line. And the rules were that any two negative numbers added together will always be a negative, so this should be a negative. All right, the next one, is this going to be a positive or a negative? It's a negative 16 and a negative 47. Is this positive or negative? I hope you guys said negative. Awesome. Okay, this one is a positive 3 and a negative 8. Okay, so positive 3 is 3 places from 0. Negative 8 is 8 places from 0. Which one has the greater absolute value? That is going to be your answer. So which one is it positive or negative? I hope you said negative. Awesome. Okay. Okay, 65 plus 60. Both of these numbers are positive. You guys are super familiar with this. You don't have to subtract anything or take away anything. So if they're both positive, the answer is obviously going to be positive. Okay, look at this one. Negative 3 plus 2. Negative 3 is just one spot further away. It has a one spot further away absolute value than positive 2. But nevertheless, it's still going to make it negative. So therefore, it is negative. Okay. Okay, now we have positive 25 and negative 89. Is this one going to be a positive or a negative number? I hope you said negative because negative 89 has a greater absolute value than positive 25. So therefore, it's going to be negative. Awesome. Okay. This one has negative 60 plus negative 4. They are both negative. That means they're going to the left. 60 spaces and then to the left four more spaces so the answer should be negative. Awesome. Okay. So that we're going to stop there. If you look at my smart score in just a few minutes we've already made it to 70. So therefore you guys if you understand the concept of the number line and absolute value and which one has the greater absolute value is going to make the number either positive or negative it should not take you more than a few minutes to accomplish a smart score of 80. Okay, our next learning target is I can add integers using counter chips, okay? Now, I'm going to actually use two color pins for this, okay? I'm going to say that we have green, a green counter chip is positive. Okay, that stands for one positive number. And a red counter chip is negative. Okay, so this stands for negative one. This is positive one. This stands for negative one. Okay, now, so the way we use counter chips to teach adding and subtracting or adding integers is if we have a number sentence like. 4 plus negative 2. Let's just start off with this. 4 plus negative 2. Okay, so I'm going to take my pen and I know that 4 is positive. So I am going to draw 4 positive circles. It's kind of like when you guys do um, I think chemistry with uh, Mr. Smith and Miss Sparks, you guys, these are kind of like little um, electrons that you can work with. I, I don't know if y'all got to that or not, but that's what I remember in school anyway. Okay, so we have minus or take away two, so I'm going to put two negatives, okay? Well, if you have a positive one and a negative one, we have to refer back to what we talked about that if you have, they have the same distance on the number line. If you have 5 and negative 5, or like I said, 1 plus negative 1 equals 0. Okay, this is called a 0 pair. And you're going to hear that a 0 pair means that you can cancel them out because they equal 0. So every time you have 
one positive and one negative on that each side, they cancel out. So there's a one, one positive, one negative, cancels each other out. Okay, here's another positive, here's another negative, it cancels each other out. So we don't have any negatives left, so this becomes zero. And we only have two positives left, so that means our answer is positive two. Because that's what we have left. Okay, you can check yourself on the calculator. If you want to, you can say four, well, four plus negative two is going to give you two. Okay. All righty, let's try another one. Let's say we have well, negative three plus one. Okay. So I'm going to do one, two, three negatives, and I'm going to do one positive, and when I cancel them out, so that's three negatives plus one positive, I'm going to cancel out what I've got, and that means I have two left. So that means my answer is negative two. What if I have, let's try over here, negative 3 plus negative 5, okay? Negative 3 plus negative 5. Well, let me get my red pen, and I'm going to draw three negatives. And then over here, I'm going to draw five negatives. Okay, well, I'm going to look for my zero pairs, and I don't have any zero pairs. They're both negative. So that just means I add them up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, which means that my answer is negative 8, because I, have, I don't have any zero pairs. And that works for positive as well, just like if this was 3 plus 5, it would be positive 8. Negative 3 plus negative 5 would be negative 8. Or I could write it as like this. Negative 3 take away 5. That is the same thing because even though I don't have the plus sign there, it's still taking away 5. Okay, and we'll discuss that a little more in the next video. But this is what you need to know to be able to do the counters. So let's go to our... IXL, I think it's uh, C2, it's add integers using counters. So let's look at here, it says, it says learn with an example. So it started me out with an example here. It says if you have a negative one and a positive two, okay, which counter shows the sum? Okay, so this is the question. You have negative one plus two. So negative one plus two. So if we are to mark out our zero pairs, we mark out one negative, one positive. That would show us just one positive left. So our answer would be positive one. Okay, look at this one. I think it's the same question. So you have one positive and two negative. So it's one plus negative two. So if you mark out your zero pairs, you just have, okay, it's, it's, it was the opposite question. It's one negative left. Okay. All right, look at this one. You have negative three plus negative two. Well, I don't see any zero pairs. So all we have to do is just add these up. One, two, three, four, five. And it looks like it's going to be all five negative ones. Okay. Here is another one. We have a positive one and a net two negatives. So we cancel out our zero pairs. We have one negative left. Our answer is negative one. All right, 
The next one is negative 5 and positive 3, or negative 5 plus 3. So if we mark out our zero pairs, it looks like we have three zero pairs. Then we have two left over, so that's negative 2. Okay, all right, this one, you got a positive 5 plus five, positive 7, and they're all positive. So all we have to do is add them together. We have 5 plus 7, so it looks like we have 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I just went down to this one because that one didn't look like it was enough. So that is positive 12 right there. Okay, same thing with this. We don't have any zero pairs because they're all red. So we have negative 5 and negative 4. So we just count them up. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we got to find the negative 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's not correct. And that one's less than 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So it looks like it's this one right here. Okay. Let's see. Negative 1 plus 4. So I have one zero pair. And then I have three positives left over. So my answer looks like it's positive 3. Okay, now I do the same thing, negative 5 plus negative 1, there's zero, zero pairs, so we just count them up. Five, negative 5 plus negative 1 is negative 6, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so it's going to be this one. Okay, so we're already at a, a smart score of 64 here. Um, if you guys get a smart score of 80, I feel like this is going to be very simple. All you have to do is remember to take, take out your zero pairs. Like one, this has one zero pair and you have two negatives left over, so your answer is negative two. So one plus negative three is negative two. Okay. All right, so I'm going to stop there and we're going to go to our next learning target. Okay, so we are now going to talk about the last learning target um, in this video, and it is I can add integers using a number line. Okay, so we did the counters. We talked about how you could understand if it's positive or negative. And I'm going to draw a number line here. Let's see if I can get to make this bigger again. Sorry. All right, so I'm going to draw my number line. Okay, put my zero here. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's negative 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, which is negative 10, 11. I got 11 on that one. All right, so I'm going to keep these numbers um, fairly small at, to start off with, just so we don't have to have a number line that's in fives or tens or anything. So let's start with um, the number 5 plus negative 2, okay? Now, we learned in the video a while ago that all we would have to do is, is draw counter tips, but I want you guys to also understand how we work a number line, okay? Because eventually you're not going to want to draw a bunch of counter tips to cross things out and, and add. So on a number line, if you guys can visualize a number line, and the rules were when we talked about um, absolute value and numbers on a number line were that if it is a positive number, it always goes to the right. If it's a negative number, it always goes to the left. Okay, so with that in mind, we start with the first number, which is positive 5. Okay, so I'm going to start with positive 5 here. And I'm going to put my little dot there. And then it says negative or minus 2, take away 2. Okay, so we're going to say plus take away two. So I'm going to just count over one, two. So that means that right here. So minus five, take away two. I go to the left because it is a negative number. So positive five, take away two, uh, one, two, lands right there, which is one, two, three. So my answer is positive three. Okay. All right, let's say that I have the number negative 1 
plus 8. Okay, I'm going to use the same number line. I'm going to start off, and I have a negative number, so I'll find the negative 1. So I'm going to say right here, I'm going to just kind of go over this one. And it says plus 8. That doesn't mean I go to the 8. It means I count over 8 spots. Okay, so I'm going to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I'm going to draw a line from here to there, and that's going to be my spot. So if I count that from 0, that's 5, 6, 7. So it looks like negative 1 plus 8 is positive 7. I can show you both of these on the calculator. Okay. 5 plus Negative 2 is negative th is positive 3. And negative 1 plus 8 is going to be positive 7. Okay. Let's do one more example on this number line. And I'm going to start off and I'm going to say, let's see, it's two negative numbers. Okay. Because if it's two positive numbers, you're just going to go positive, then positive again. Remember, if it's a positive number, you go to the right. If it's a negative number, you go to the left. So let's try negative 2 plus negative 6. Okay? Negative 2 plus negative 6. So I'm going to take my little number line here, and I'm going to start at let's see, 0, 1, 2. So I'm going to start at 2. Right there, it's negative 2. And I'm going to go back six. I'm not going to six. I'm going back six spaces. That is the biggest mistake people make is they want to say, oh, I'm just going to the number six. That's not true. I'm going six spaces from negative two. And since it's negative, I'm going to go to the left. So I'm going to say one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to actually attach my line here. And so if I count that, this is negative 5, 6, 7, 8. Looks like it's negative 8. Let's check that on the calculator, okay? So I say negative 2 plus negative 6, and that gives me negative 8. Just like positive 2 plus 6 would give us positive 8, okay? All right, so let's go to our IXL, and I'm going to show you some of these, okay? All right, so this is actually C3, adding integers using a number line. Okay, so we start off with, okay, so it's which number line models negative 4 plus negative 6. Okay, well, I'm going to find negative 4 first, so the end of my number line to start here. Okay, now what does it say? If it's positive, it goes to the right, it's negative, it goes to the left. So I automatically know this one's not right. The first one is not right because it go, it's going to the right. But I find negative 4, right, negative 4, and I can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It goes back 6 spaces. And so it points to the answer of negative 10. So I click on this, and I type in negative 10. So negative 4 plus negative 6 is negative 10. Okay. Which number line models 2 plus negative 5? Well, let's see. This one starts at 2. This one starts at 2. Okay, this one, it says 2 plus negative 5. So if it's negative 5, we have to go to the left. This one does not go to the left. So the second one does, and it goes back 5 spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so the answer is negative 3, and we click on this one. Because if since it's a negative number, we go to the left on the number line. Awesome. Okay, let's do the next one. Negative 3 plus negative 7. Well, this one starts at negative 3. This one starts at negative 7. We know it's got to start at our first number. So let's start at negative 3. And then let's check it. We go back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 spaces. And it ends at negative 10, so this is the winner. We're going to type in negative 10. Okay, this next one is 5 plus negative 1. So I must, they both start at 5. 
but it says plus negative one. So if it's a negative number, it's going to go to the left. So this one goes five plus one, and this one goes five plus negative one because it's going backwards. So we're going to go to five plus negative one is actually equals four. Okay. All right. Let's do the next one. We have negative two plus negative four. So they both start at negative two. Now this is what I was talking about. You don't go to negative four, you go back four spaces. So we're going to say one, two, three, four. So negative two plus negative four is negative six. You can think of it just like two plus four, which is positive six, but it's on the negative side of the number line. Let's see. Let's do this one is eight plus negative eight plus eight. Okay. So what do we say about those two? What is that called? Those are called zero pairs. They're opposites, okay? So that should equal zero, so you should be looking for zero. Well, this one starts at zero, this one ends at zero. Remember, it's negative eight, so we start, whatever the first number is, is where we start the number line. So this starts at negative eight, and it adds eight, so it's zero. So the number line, the little arrow should be pointing at the end result, which is zero. So it's gonna be this one and the zero is our answer. Okay, negative one plus negative one. Now, this one are two negatives, okay? So they both start at negative one, but this is a negative number. So this one goes backwards and this one goes forwards. Am I supposed to go to the left or to the right? I hope you said to the left because it's a negative number. So negative one plus negative one more. It's like just the same thing as saying one plus one is two. Negative one plus negative one is negative two. So we got negative two. Okay. All right. Negative 20 plus 16. So we our first number starts on negative 20. Okay. This one starts on negative 20. And if you notice, the scale is not in ones anymore. The scale is in fours because the numbers have gotten bigger. So don't let that freak you out. It's just if they're in fours instead of ones. Okay. I think some of them are in fives. It just depends. Okay. So this these both start in negative 20 and we're going positive 16. Okay. Well, so if we go positive 16 and we count by fours, we go... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So it ends at negative 4. This one would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 24, 18, 24. So we've already gone too far. It doesn't end at 16. You have to count 16 over. So negative 4 is your answer. Okay, let's look at this one. And this scale is at twos. Look at the scale. See, negative two, negative four, negative six. So we have to count by twos on this one. So it's negative six plus negative eight. Well, they both start at negative six. Now I got to count back by twos to eight, like up to eight times. Okay, so this is just two. So it'd be like negative six plus two equals eight. That's not what we're looking for. So negative six plus two would be an eight. Okay. So then plus four plus six plus eight. So this one is, if you were to add negative eight, this would be negative 14. So this is your, this is your guy right there. Negative 14. Okay. All right. Okay. This one is also in fours, the scales in fours. So you 20, 24, 28, and that starts with negative 16. Well, this one starts with positive 24, and this one starts with negative 16. So this one is obviously your answer. So you go over positive, you go into the right because it's a positive number. So you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So it ends at positive 8. So this is your number line. Okay. All right. So I'm going to stop here because I have got a score of 68. It's not going to take you much longer to get a score of 80. These are the three that you need to worry about. I would go ahead if I were you and I would, after this video is over, and go ahead and go to my Excel and do these three IXLs.
and then um, watch the second video on subtracting and do those two axioms. And then, then you can write your rules, which is assignment number 12. Um, make sure you read your rubric, and if you have any questions, uh, get on our videos, our, our Google Meets, or uh, email Mr. Norton or myself. You guys have a good day.